Hey guys, welcome to episode three that we're calling Go and Possibles Bag. So there's a Go Bag and a Possibles Bag. Let me explain that. I see that a little bit differently than most of the industry because there's a, there's a common term that one of them is a bug out bag and the other one is called a, um, a Go Bag. Uh, get out of dodge bag, maybe something like that. So if you're talking about a bug out bag, that's a different thing. That's something at your house that's packed up that if you have to leave, you're not going to come back again, right? So that's called a bug out bag. Uh, that's something that is, uh, it's going to be way bigger. And, and uh, that's a life and death kind of, we got to get the family and roll out of here kind of thing. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about what I call either, um, it, well, let's just go with go bag. A go bag in my background as being a bodyguard for the CIA would, would rest right behind your legs. It's small. It's basically enough to get me back to the base. So maybe I have to spend the night uh, outside while I'm trying to get there. Maybe it's ammunition. Maybe it's depending on where I'm at in the world, I would adjust that bag. It means I have to train when I leave this vehicle, I'm going to leave the vehicle and not come back. So if I'm going to get out of this vehicle and leave and grab it, it's enough stuff to keep me um, safe, right? So that's what we're looking at, customized or tailored to here. So if there's something that happens, some kind of emergency where I had to grab a bag out of my vehicle and possibly walk home, that's the kind of thing we're talking about. Now, it's going to be different, obviously, for the winter as it is the summer. So this gets tailored throughout the year. If, uh, if you have spent the night outside in the snow, it's a different game. It means if you don't have a ground pad, a thermal layer to keep the ice and snow or the, the, the cold dirt from sucking the heat out of you, it's going to be, it could be fatal actually, but it is going to be a horrible night, right? So thinking about a thermal layer, thinking about a good sleeping bag per those uh, temperatures, uh, and maybe even a bivy sack, a waterproof shell that goes over top of it, you could lay on the ground and sleep at night. Now, is it going to be comfortable? Probably not. You're going to be a little chilly? Yeah, but you're going to be alive. So those are things that you want to think about, right? So that's what we're talking about with this go bag. Within the go bag, there might be things like snacks, water, a poncho, uh, a shovel. We kind of talked about that a little bit with a vehicle. Uh, food and water. Um, from these bags, as long as you replace them, we've had things stored in our cars like snacks. Like that's one of the best things about having kids. One of the many awesome things about having kids, there's always snacks and there's always wipes, right? I joke about that all the time, uh, but it's true. They're, they're absolutely amazing. So having that kind of stuff in your bag. So freeze dried mountain house with a stove. With a stove, my, um, I've got it somewhere around here. Um, can you grab that, brother? I didn't plan on talking about this, but an actual stove in your, in your vehicle means that you can just boil water. If I can boil two cups of water and pour that into a mountain house or a freeze-dried meal, that means it's a hot it is a hot, uh, <laughs> it's a hot meal. It's self-contained. I highly recommend these, even if you're not a camper or a hiker, everything is self-contained here. And literally, you put the base on it just to make it even falling over. You screw in the actual stove part you can find these on Amazon. You can find them at Cabela's. You turn on the gas, you make a spark, and it literally is a jet. Then once you get this two, two cups of water in here, you just slide it on like this. And once you, once you uh, get it stable, you put on the lid. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. You can't see it? Cool. You put on the lid, and then uh, once it boils, you're going to see it start shaking and then steam coming out, but this part turns orange on this particular one that's called a flash. But it's oh, I'm at 90 seconds, maybe. Uh, you got boiling hot water. You can take that, and you can dump it into your freeze-dried meal, and then in 10 minutes, you stir it, let it soak in, and you're going to have a hot meal. That's another trick for uh, Arctic survival is you can take that same water, fill it up with 32 ounces, as much as you can get, put it in a, in a, a Nalgene bottle, the hard ones, not the soft because you're going to melt them. Get the hard lex on uh, that hard uh, you know, the, they call it polycarbonate plastic pour that in there now put that in your sleeping bag and you've got a heater all night so literally I've done this many many times and it absolutely works yes it's cooler at the end of the night but it's still generating heat putting off some heat uh, for your bag so that's something to think about you know for your go bag uh, water storage now I, I recommend bladders why because if you fill up a bottle and it freezes it can bust and now you're going to thaw out and it's going to be wet all over your car so those water bladders very inexpensive 20 bucks go check them out at Murdoch's go check them out at Cabela's all over you can get them on Amazon whatever get those water bladders they can freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw and then you're going to have some water uh, people say well i'm gonna i'm gonna heat up uh, ice and all that kind of stuff don't even mess with that stuff have that you know and be able to uh uh, utilize that. What if it does freeze? You can put it in your coat, walk as you're walking home, your body heat's going to melt that and you're going to have a, a bag of water. So just something to think about. All right, now what's a possibles bag then? We talked about this. Possibles bag goes 
in your go bag. So I was talking about having a bag with kids. I'm always like, hey, where's your headlamp? Where's your stuff? And they scattered all out. Whether it's your go bag, your bug out bag, your whatever. Uh, if I say, hey, we're going to go over to a friend's house. They live out in the country. Bring your headlamp. They're just going to go grab their entire possibles bag. It's not big. It's not much, but it's got the things in it that I want them to have all the time, and it helps keep them together. So this is something that we're offering for the month of September. We want to bring these out. Uh, we've put them together. We've done the work for you. Now, remember, it's a base model. Later, we are going to come out with one that's a little you know, it's a high quality stuff. This is good quality stuff, but it's not what we call a kind of our heirloom series. So uh, this is going to be enough. I'm minus one thing. I apologize. We're waiting for life straws, but I'll talk about this. So the first thing is your headlamp. Again, your headlamp, they've come so far in technology. This is an LED light. And I like the fact that many of them now they have, uh, they put out a lot of power. So with an LED, it can last hours and hours. It's got high, it's got low, it's got red. That's the ones I'd recommend. Now, if it goes, if it does have blue and you're a hunter, you can track blood and all that kind of stuff because it stands out in blue. But if it's got high, low, and red. High, because if it's kind of an emergency, you want as much light as you can, and they're getting really high with the technology they're putting out as far as lumens. So make sure you've got a high. Low, because if you're just doing something like starting a fire and you don't want to burn the batteries, keep it on low all the time. If you're reading a book, things like that, you don't need all that light, right? And it'll, it'll save your batteries. And then red, uh, at night, we just did it. I was at a men's retreat speaking. Everybody's got their red light for courtesy if they're bumping around and people are sleeping. And if I'm talking to BK over there, I'm not blasting light in his face. And he's like, hey man, can you look over there? I am a huge advocate of a headlamp. If you go out with your kids and you're playing around uh, in the country or you're camping or whatever, throw it on their neck or on their head and tell them to leave it on. So now I'd see blinking lights or white or red or whatever, and I can see where they're at because I don't want to lose them. They understand that, so they always bring their headlamp. Next thing, a fire, a knife with a fire starter. I love multi-use tools. I had this is an inexpensive one, and I use it all the time. I've got several that do this, but I always grab this one. That's why we're using this one in our possibles bag. We wanted to keep it affordable, around 100 bucks. I think it's 110, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, but this is good quality gear. What this is, like I said, I start this out. It seems like the clicker is always jammed up, so I look like a fool hitting it 20 times. Turn that gas on and spark that thing, and it puts out quite a bit of light. So I'm like spark. So that spark. Again, I'll move over here with the fire, uh, the fire cotton, fire cotton and film canisters. I had to look for these because film, there's not what's 35 millimeter film. So I got a bunch of them and me, the 86er, thanks brother. And my kids sat there and jammed Vaseline into these cotton balls. We put four or five, depending on how big they were. If you pull this cotton ball out, flake it out a little bit and spark it one time, it's going to burn for three minutes. That means prep your kindling, your, uh, I'm sorry, your tender, your kindling and your fuel, have it all staged right there. Light that cotton ball. You got three minutes to graduate and make bigger flames so that's not even with, with the wind blowing that thing stays lit and it's going to help you make, build your fire so uh, and it's a good knife these knives high carbon steel so when they go dull you can sharpen them very easily in the field so we'll talk about next is a compass a compass a basic orienteering compass we got parker that ordered a bunch of these so as soon as they come in we're going to have these kits ready but something to just let you know where north is with some basic skills this is really all you need to navigate now they've got other ones with bells and whistles and all this stuff but this is plenty if you know where north is and it's got a good um, you know, uh, the correct stuff filling it so it doesn't freeze up when it's cold and all that kind of stuff. Really, you just need to know where north is, line that up, find your bearing, and then get out of there. Especially if you know generally where you're going, you know, that, hey, the interstate's to my south, and I know that there's a river to my whatever, uh, to my to my east. You can kind of, like, navigate and then hit that interstate. So uh, even without a map, you could know if you knew where you're at, then you can navigate a little bit. Uh, could be life-saving. If you head off in the wrong direction, there's been many cases where cars got, you know, stuck. Dad goes off to go find something, no idea where he's at, and then they find him later frozen in the whatever. Mom's, you know, caring for the kids. So uh, just think about a compass. Life straw, like I said, I apologize, I don't have that one. Literally, it's a, it's a tube that you you stick down into dirty water like the uh, uh, you know a mud puddle or a creek or a stream and then suck it out of there so it filters out uh, a lot of those things that are harmful so uh, the the more advanced one or the more the higher end bag is gonna actually have a water pump in it but a life straw is inexpensive uh, one method of that Keep a, uh, a Ziploc bag. Now make sure it's the freezer bag and it's a double zip bag. I just did this a couple weeks ago. Go down to the river and you bag up all that water. A gallon of water, close it, and then put it back in this bag. Carry it back up to your camp and you can use that life straw to stick right in there and drink out of there. Right? That's one option. The other option is get a water bag, um, an actual like an MSR or the new ones that they have. I forget the name of them. They're less expensive. And then, and then use a pump. Once you pump that out of the river, it's ready. You don't have to mess with it. It's ready to drink and you don't have to mess with carrying around gray water water. So 
two different options, a little different price point, no worries. Uh, long metal spork. So this is a titanium uh, by C to Summit. The reason why you want one of these is, you know, if you have bits of steak and all that, then you can use the fork portion. If you've got soup, you can use the spoon. So that spork is really good. The reason why it's so long is because if the mountain dry, um, you never want to be doing dishes when you're out in the wild or you're in the survival situation or something like that. You just want to boil water. That means your stuff never gets dirty. You boil water, pour it in mountain house meal. You mix this, and if you get the short spoon, you're going to be licking beef stroganoff off your knuckles, right? So get the long spoon, stir it all up, and close it for 10 minutes. It's going to heat up. It's going to be a fantastic meal. Then you clean it. The kids are in charge with their own wipes to keep their spoon clean. As soon as they're done, they do this, and the one they comes with a little carabiner. Click it back onto your backpack click it onto your pocket, click it onto whatever, your belt loop, just don't lose your spoon. So I mark it, I carve into the, this is mine, but in theirs, I carve their names in it, you get one spoon, that's your spoon, take care of it. The, after you're done with your meal, they come with a Ziploc deal, so the trash, eat all of it, fold it up, Ziploc it, and put it in the trash. Now you're only carrying out this much trash after a few days, uh, and you're not worried about cleaning pots and pans, because that's an absolute nightmare, okay? Then we say, well, we're clicking around, trying to make fire and all that kind of stuff, I bought 50 of these because this is a great, you know, uh, thing to have. I place them in all my trucks because when people, I don't smoke, people go, who's got a lighter? I'll run to my vehicle and grab a lighter. So um, people say, what if it doesn't work? High altitude is going to affect this if you're up too high and all that stuff. They say, what if it doesn't work? I say, what if it does? Now I'm giving you fire in one second as opposed to going through all this stuff. So it's something to consider. Just grab a disposable lighter and then throw it in your possibles bag. And obviously, like I said, my kids use these. I, I, I teach them, be responsible. You light that thing when I'm with you only and don't be playing with it and all that kind of stuff. So the possibles bag is going to be available through the month of September. We're going to build them. We're going to put them together. We're going to do all this stuff. Later we'll have the upgraded version, but the possibles bag would go in any other bag. It's small enough to fit right in your go bag, right in your get out of Dodge bag bag, right in your bug out bag, whatever. But now it's something uh, I, would, I would even recommend we may make up the card and say what the contents are. So if you borrow something out of it, look at it, and make sure you replace it. So that's just something to consider. When we talk about these go bags, we talk about these possibles bags. If you do it now, month of September, National Preparedness Month, it won't catch you later. Where's my headlamp and you're playing all that game. So hope this was helpful, guys. If you've got any questions and look us up, ableshepherd.com. That's A-B-L-E-S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D.com. Love you guys. God bless you. Take care of one another.